sometimes you just need to be honest with people. You yeah. really need to be honest. So you can say, if your friend is is sitting with a guy that is just a zero in life, tell a friend, no, he's a zero. You put him woman into our money behind, you're losing a game. Yeah. Ain't gonna go. Yeah, yeah. 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 gonna be fine, never the car she I would have given up the the <laughs> <laughs> And today we're doing it differently. We are at Stackeny Call. We are at Stackeny. Wait, what? 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 My English is going away. We are at Stackeny Call, the Grove. No. No. My name is Itumeleng Mofikeng. We've got a surprise for you. I am joined by Guyani and Matabo Bila, guys. It's going to be such an exciting vibe. Let's do this. Hi, guys. My name is Guyani Bila co-director of Mafana Ato, also co-producer, and co-producer of Long Gone, currently all streaming on Showmax. Hi, my name is Mata Mobila, and most of you know me from Giani Land of Blood. That's the role I came into the industry, well, film and no, television industry with. And um, I've also done both of my films on SABC2, and the latest is Mafana Ato, that is on Showmax at the moment. And yeah, I'm excited for today. We are here gathered to celebrate the communion and the coming together of this beautiful couple. Pesi, Shoane, and Mafanato, Bila. Today we chose to watch Chris Nolan's Tenant, the only film we could watch really on cinema. So yeah, let's go watch Denzel Washington's song. Yeah, let's go watch it. watched the movie before we even get into the details of the film. Let's just discuss the the cinema, the experience of being in an IMAX theatre. How was that? Uh, for me, oh, you guys are looking at it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was really nice. Especially when you watch an IMAX movie that was shot on an IMAX camera. The cinema is just nice and open. The screen is super big. And this cinema is particularly nice to us because this is where we watch all of our films. It's like not that much of a drive for us, so always a nice time when we come here. And also the prestige if you ever have a chance, come check that out. What I loved about IMAX is that the screen is humongous. <laughs> like you can literally see everything. And it absorbs you into that world. I mean, the sound was like very present and you could hear clearly everything that was going on. And comfortable, also during now, during the pandemic, at least there's social distancing within the cinema itself, which is a nice element because then you feel more comfortable um, because now we are so comfortable in our own living rooms. But this was really nice. It's a nice way of bringing, like, bringing us back into the cinema and still enjoying it. The last thing, it would be a crime to watch this film on like a soft yeah, no, no, no. small screen. I don't like touching people. I don't like sitting next to people. I don't want to be next to anyone. I don't know, unless if I came here to hold your hand, but I hardly hold people's hands. So the sitting makes me feel like I'm at home because there's space between people. And the fact that everyone is sanitized and everyone is allowed, is, is supposed to wear masks, makes it more nice. I feel like, yo, I'm safe out here. There's no way I'm gonna be worried about any, Corona or touching a surface. I've been touching surfaces all the time because usually I touch a surface, I think about it, I put hand sanitizer on it. Where's my hand sanitizer anyway? I found it. Trust me. I love the fact that they check your temperature, make sure that you are safe. And let's talk, talk about IMAX. Here's the thing I've never been to IMAX. I've been to Prestige, I've been to the normal cinemas. IMAX made me go wild because the thing is, the screen starts at the bottom to the top, and you're like, 
watching this whole thing and then when you see the roof of a, of a building it's almost as if it just touches the rest of the roof of the of the cinema itself and the floor as well so it's it's just i don't know but with that said i wish imax had those chairs that are at, at prestige where you can just chill and sleep if you want because this foam was long <laughs> but i loved it okay let's 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 forget about that and talk about the film now Shoo, uh -uh. No, I didn't like that movie, guys. I was so confused the whole time. I loved it. I, I, I really felt like um, the first time I watched, I watched Inception. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that it was actually directed by Christopher Nolan. So after the movie, I'm like, Lenny, you don't feel like Inception. He's like, oh, it's the same director. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> why. It's so confusing. But I loved the confusion. It was very nice. It was actually threw up the title. Like, no point of job. It kept me intrigued all the time. I wanted to know what's going to happen. And that's that's the main thing I love. Acting was amazing. Like it was on another level. No one was. I could say this guy was. This guy was. You know, stood out. Everyone was on point. The movie was really interesting for me. Um, learning about inversion theory. I feel like uh, Chris Nolan is what if Neil deGrasse Tyson had talent in filmmaking would be and that would be like you know this guy uh, uh, Chris Nolan who actually is also like a student of cinema who's still advocating like many other old uh, cinema buffs that want to make you experience what cinema was supposed to be. At the beginning I was confused because there's people going in reverse and all these other things but I what I like about it is that they action scenes are the ones that are in they say inverse so the action scenes are in reverse most of the time and that makes you think you look at the action scenes you're like oh why is it going like that it's confusing a bit but it makes it worth it because your mind goes crazy it's like oh why 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 are people going in reverse and then you think it's like intellectually challenging it challenges your head you're like okay let me think let me think let me think is there another thing do i have to do that do i have to do what, what am i supposed to think what's happening next Who, who's gonna die now but think about the violence this way violence usually is like go 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 and you have people right but on this one the violence is subtle and we look at the fact that the only thing that felt violent there was when the guy hit the woman because the violence it, all the violence seemed like it's easy when he hit the woman you felt it that underlined it that underlined the violence when it comes to gender based violence because you felt that part because the other violence was chill. Christopher Nolan movies always have rewatchability status. You have to rewatch to understand again. But here he like plays on it for sure. There's no way you're gonna watch this film and say, I understood from the get go. You get what I'm saying? Uh, unless like you're some MIT doctor or whatever of physics from the get go, you're really gonna have to watch this twice, three times. I'm sure I'll get it on my fourth or fifth somewhere around there. I rated um, a solid eight out of 10 just so I feel like it's a classic, maybe, but time can only can only justify me. So let's talk about this in ten years' time. Maybe this eight will be a ten out of ten. Nah, wow. I'll say eight out of ten. <laughs> I'm also gonna say eight because I feel I still need to watch it. You to okay. to and why I give it an eight? Because I'm not gonna ask my next person to watch it again. I don't like repeating movies. I, I'm, I'm just that type of person. I don't like repeating movies because I hate watching something and knowing what's going to happen. Sure, I feel you. But what's the type? But you watch it, it would be fresh again. Yeah, but what's the I think angle. maybe I might give it a chance because there's certain things I missed. I felt like like things that were yeah, you're there. Like yeah, what just hit me? But I was like, you know, this film deserves a nine. I would watch it again because it challenges my mind. I would watch it over and over because it, it makes it more nicer. The one that I didn't give it because I got confused at the beginning. I felt like the exposition was dragging a lot. I feel bad for rating because I'm going to give it a four. <laughs> <laughs> the moral I took, just the essence of time, mm -hmm. you know, um, how we, we tend to take time and not, not regard time. Yeah, like I just take it for granted. There's so many things that because that's the thing that's the feeling i kept feeling all the time like what am i doing with my time you know the, the, the essence of just time 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 and imagining if someone knowing that there is a higher being in life and someone he can just 
any he time. Or she can just take the time and, just, and it's done for you, mm. you know? I think I learned from the phone that no matter where you are, anything can happen. Half of the things that are happening there, you might think it's all fiction, but mm-hmm. most things like that are, <laughs> are really like happening. Jets, yes. And you don't know who actually has your life in their hands. And you know, one minute. Just like that part when he was just before they crashed the plane, and that guy was on some, it will barely be in the media because no one dies. No, no. Exactly. And, you, and I was just like, wait a minute. This is like, like, yeah, like these things are constantly covered up because I we can get away with it. You know, right. so it's just like you never know what's happening. You have money, you can make things happen. <laughs> Matabo, what is Mafanato to you? Well, Mafanato is about a woman who's liberated. You know, she's 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 conformed to being married as a as a, and, and be a mother, but then she realized that doesn't work well and she breaks out and she starts being the lady, the girl she's always fought to how can I put it? She's she's she switches roles. You know, her husband cheated on her. She switches roles. She goes to another man that is married, and she becomes the side girl. So that is basically who Mafanato is. We take it, it's what you do is take you go through the journey of her life of being a side chick, but a respectable side chick, a, a, a well-grounded side chick, a side chick that understands who she is and what she wants. You know, a side chick that really doesn't mind being a side chick because that is her aim, to be a side chick. So that's just basically who Mafano is. Then the world is built around her and the people who come and affect her and, and the things that are happening around her and the demons she has to fight within herself. What's the feeling with your wife acting as Mafano? Okay, let me, let, me, let me be philosophical in a sense, yeah, that who Mafano is, it's a woman of secrets. Her name says it all, right? Um, Mafanato is a woman of secrets, and um, she 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 she'd rather take it to the grave with her, and she's doing at all costs to keep uh, the, her perception to people of who she is uh, under wraps. You get what I'm saying? It's it's rather be seen maybe with, with somebody in the bedroom or something. But at, at all, who who Mafanato knows is herself at her core and that's her secret the rest of the world is just revolving and they think they know who this person is but they don't really know how deep is she willing to go get whatever she wants to get that that's who i think you know uh beyond the liberated woman and all of those things mafanato is and that's the person she's a dangerous person you do not want to be with that person because she could kill you this is somebody that could legit kill you and you know, nobody could ever know. That's why I'm not even Team Mafanato. I'm Team Maureen. <laughs> My favorite scene is like when Mafanato gets confronted at like episode five. You know, uh, I I've watched that scene so many times. I'm like, yes, Maureen. You know, like <laughs> tell this girl. You know. So uh, yeah, that's that's who Mafanato is. Play Challenges it. of Matawo playing it and you directing and me directing it as you know she's my wife and I'm you know her husband. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's 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 not my first time directing Matabo because uh, we, we we come from film school together. The way we met was through a film. Uh, I know how to kind of switch off, kind of you know, a, a professional etiquette kind of kicks in on set. Even people like to say you wouldn't say you guys are married. You get what I'm saying? So on set, there's no oh holding my hand like you like to do in public, like she likes to do in public or whatever. Um, it's, it's, nice. it's, it's quite pro- you professional. You're <laughs> actually harder on me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm extra, I'm actually, actually way hard on her because I know, like I'm a nice person in general. So when I direct my actors, I'm not as, you know, I, I try to bring out the nice, the, uh, the best performance in a nice manner. With Matabo, I know her potential and I know where her limit is. Uh, with this production, I got to see the evolvedness of her in a sense without even trying to toot her horn. Like, um, I got to see how much of a strong screen actress she is, you know? A lot of people were giving her props uh, behind the scenes, uh, being like, you know, the editors being like, you're really talented. I got to see it, like, and I was like, mm, 
actually this was good like knowing that we just changed the script like right now and um the scenario just changed and you know the little subtleties and that she can hold her own with you know these great actors you know because Mafanata has, has a pretty strong cast and some names that have been there uh for a while and, and being like oh, oh. You know, sometimes you, you Wait, take it before, for granted. Before. Can you name drop a bit? Name drop like one, two, three. Who who is on the who is on the phone? Like people like Manta Kaduka, who's like you amazing. know, <laughs> he's very amazing. I enjoy scenes with him. Uh, you know, slowly starting to become one of my favorite actors in the game. You know, uh, people like Fomani. Hey, I'm in here with phone. I don't know how to do it, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. Kokezo. Kokezo. Mojela. Mojela. Oh, oh. Yeah, you were saying C or something. And she has an Aledi Award. Yes. Dude, oh. Kokezo has an Aledi yeah, Award. You get what I'm saying? I, I, I've been like a fan. I even texted her the other day. She, she's I was amazing. Like, I was like, Kokezo, I'm a fan. I had to, I know we're friends. There was even a time where we were like in a pool when it was downtime and stuff and we got to talk about the industry yeah, that, that yeah. day when I was preparing for the pilot shoot or whatever. And like we became friends. I had to text her after my final went on Showmax. I was like, dude, I know like we, we're friends, but can I take a moment to say I'm a fan. Like I'm genuinely a fan. Let it not be taken for granted. You know, you, you could be next to someone and you, you don't know this person was on set with Leonardo DiCaprio. She was on Blood Diamonds. She was on what, what and you take her for granted like, oh, okay. You know, she's been <laughs> no, on she's stage with her Paul Threadbaum and all of those things. Those are great actors. And oh, the chemistry between Matawa and Koketo on screen, I was like, understand this guys like the budget was very limited even though like we had access to higher things where we could get to see uh, this rich world boats and all of those things we didn't have nearly as much as we should have had to make this world as great rich wise and she was one of the characters where i was like oh i wish i had louis vuitton to put on you as this doctor that wears louis vuitton but why i say she i'm a fan of hers is because she doesn't even need louis vuitton I can see it in her that like she's pulling this rich doctor off just on performance only. You get what I'm saying? So things like that, like like just it's it's a fantastic cast. You are straight with your people. You tell them true things. Like you are addressing your friend, don't leave your husband. Why is your character like that? Because she's seen it all. She's gone through it all. She was cheated on. She 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 had a husband that was sleeping with every girl she could imagine of. And when she decided to change and just be like, I don't care anymore. She she started just being very conf upfront with everything, being very confrontational with everything and be being very honest. I mean, if this is the life you want, do you want to stay in the marriage with this guy? Then stay, you know, cause she decided to leave and she decided a different way of life. So that's just who she is. You were sick and you soldiered on, on this project. Why was that important? to you first is because i committed myself to the film i mean with me i don't know if it's a fortunate thing or <laughs> it's a disadvantage i mean i saw the pre-production happen right in front of my eyes i mean the director my husband <laughs> <laughs> nothing bias i guess <laughs> but i mean i saw the 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 the, the, the pre-production happened you know, behind me and they, they asked me a long time ago before any other actor knew that can you please play Mafanato, you know, you look like Mafanato and whatnot, this is the type of girl we want and um, I saw the, the, the strain it took on the producers and, and I understood how hard it was to actually make this happen so me being sick I didn't want it to be like oh no now you know what do we do with this and also the commitment of just being an actor and, and committing to this is what I want to do as an actor um, it's not every day that you get to shoot and I believe that when you with shooting differs you know you you grow with every every production that you go to you grow as an actor your performance becomes better your confidence becomes better and I don't want to lose that I mean it's an opportunity you can sit as an actor for a very long time without even practicing your skill and once you get the opportunity you really want to do it and that's why I was just so committed to it and never wanted to back down and say hey I'm sick can you give us a bit of information about long gone okay uh, so long gone is my uh, or my company's first step into ownership you know 
so Long Gone for me is a, is a movie that started over a cup of coffee. Hankers called me, he said, I have a great concept. Um, let's let's try beat it out it was a couple of phone calls where he kept trying to you know say ha 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 and collaboration is not an easy thing for me you know but that's where i'd say we decided to go into the film business side of it so it's it's me as an executive producer my company as an executive producer we put up money and the main objective was we're gonna get this somewhere and make money off this so it's a business move for us you get what I'm saying? Uh, a passion project, yes, very much so. But we're very happy that it's reaching the levels that it's reaching and it's garnering a wider audience. Because, um, yeah, man, uh, Long Gone is, 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 a, is a passion. And also what's nice about Long Gone, 90% of, of the crew and cast, uh, yeah, crew and cast, I would even say 100% of cast is TUT students. And that's big for me as a, as a TUT alumni, where I could say we, we as filmmakers that went there and actors that went there are doing something inside the industry on our own. We're building this brotherhood and we're gonna make it big. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, that's what Long Gone is for us. What would you say in conclusion to the interview? Watch the space. We are, we are slowly creeping in, uh, we're making great work. Uh, check out Mafanato, check out Long Gone, all on Show Max, and we're hitting the world and hopefully, you know, uh, by God's grace, we'll get to the levels we want. Nice, thank you. And patience, patience, guys. Young filmmakers, can I please go to young filmmakers, guys? It's very important to understand this journey is not a tomorrow thing. And, and all of that. They'll never tell you about the quiet days in the office where you're alone and casting your computer and all you have is this dream. It, it, it took us a good five years from starting our company and graduating from film school to here. What would Mafanato say to the people? Oh my goodness, what can people take from Mafanato? Oh my, I don't even know where to start. Um, because she is so, you know what I feel people can take from Mafanato is her confidence, you know? And her being so liberated, you know, that is something you can really take. Her behavior, no. I don't think it's any behavior. I'm a married woman. I don't, I don't think I'd want um, a girl interfering into my marriage, <laughs> you know. But um, the honesty, being able to tell people the way things are. A lot of us are not, you know, we always tend to beat around the bush because we care about people's feelings. But... <laughs> Sometimes you just need to be honest with people. You really need to be honest. So you can say, if your friend is is sitting with a guy that is just a zero in life, tell a friend, no, he's a zero. <laughs> Stop comforting your friend and telling them, no, you can carry on. Look at the good side. Because then people end up in relationships where they're abused, where people die, you know? What you can take from a friend is honesty. Be honest like her. Just be brutal, you know? And it's not that you don't have a conscience, but it's because you love. Sometimes you need to give tough love. And I think that's what my friend did displays at some point. Yeah. Umi is going to be around for a long time. She says she's back. Yeah. Let's hope she's back for real. So, so I'll see you guys. Do you want to see her? Show her, show her. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> Remember to watch Mafanato and Long Gone on Show Max. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave the descriptions under. Oh wait, I'm gonna leave the link under the descriptions and also make a pop up here if I can. Uh, I think I can't do that. I don't have the liability yet. So please subscribe, like, share so that I can get the 1,000. I can put things that you like everywhere on the screen. You get it? That's amazing. So I'll see you guys. That was an amazing one. It was beautiful. Thank you, Stack Kenico, for allowing us to shoot here because we lost the studio because of the COVID thing. <clears throat> yeah. So since we are done with that, I'm out, I'm out of here. I'll see you guys. Thank you. That's it. Easy. Easy. Because we rejoice. Because people, they wish to be here.